You know, I've studied the most brilliant minds that I could possibly find, whether it's through an audio book or it's through a book or now even as of today, whether it's through YouTube or different social media channels. I search for brilliant minds within industries or or crafts that I appreciate. I'm talking about, you know, not just your your traditional brilliant minds like Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, you know, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk for some of you watching. More than that, I'm talking about even those who are not even particularly known because they don't they don't necessarily make themselves public. And so sometimes, you know, when you look at a specific company, think of it, a brand that you appreciate, a brand that you acknowledge, and we'll use Apple because I think everyone loves Apple, uh, or at least is aware of the brand. Some of us are diehard Androids, right? Um, but anyway, when you think about the the brand, the recognition that Apple has, we have to give them credit because they have enough power where their product isn't even released, but people are looking forward to the keynote to talk about the release. Not only that, but when they talk about the features of the product that isn't even yet released, they have the entire crowd clapping over every highlight, over every change, over every upgrade. Not only that, but when they mention the minimum price which is far more expensive than their than their competitors in a highly saturated market they're clapping for that so do you want to have that type of effect on people well i want to share with you you know in my in my climb and in in my career in my experience and in my years of studying these brilliant minds because i believe it, my my personal opinion i believe that if you want to be um, a specific way you have to study people who are already that specific way. Does that make sense? So that's the fastest way to get it. And so I want to share with you three common traits that the uber successful, the absolute most successful and the most brilliant that I've studied have. These are very common traits and and the best part about it is they're easily applicable if you so choose. So if you want to know what those three important traits are of successful people, stick around and watch this entire video. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I am your host. Sales Remastered is this channel that is designed to help loan officers sell more loans, to help people develop the right mindset to be better than they were the day before or to progressively climb and to give yourself some hustle nutrition each and every day, whether it's morning, afternoon or night, and to give you that that kind of that boost of, of thought prov provocative, thought provided thought provoking uh, content that will really kind of resonate with you and put it in a different way put it in a different spin if you notice you know I had a commenter on my uh, YouTube channel asked the other day he's like man I noticed you in a hoodie a lot are you coming from the gym I'm like yeah this is my post workout you know you see like I, I come from the gym and I'm trying to use this as a way of, of, of therapy if you will and oddly enough the information that I share with you it just happens to be applicable to a lot of people in sales and so if you're not in sales but you appreciate the motivational content regardless of why you're here I appreciate your attention so please like comment and subscribe if you haven't hit the bell get the notifications of the of the future content that's up that's um uh upcoming <laughs> because i do i am uploading on a daily basis again and today is thursday september 27 2018 thursday for those of you who don't know i do a live session um every morning every i'm sorry every morning every thursday on youtube live um, which will soon roll out to Facebook Live, but as of right now, it's only on YouTube Live, every Thursday morning from 8.30 to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if you want, if you are in sales and, and your income is, is determined based on how well you sell and how good and how well you negotiate, then that's definitely an event you want to attend. So check out the link below if you're not catching this on YouTube and look at the events. If anything, set yourself a reminder and be sure that you hop on to at Sales Remastered on YouTube every Thursday morning from 8.30 to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, back to the topic at hand. Do you wanna know what those three traits are that I've found to be, to be common with almost every single, pretty much every single successful mind that I've studied? Well, I'm gonna share that with you. My hope is that you can learn from these traits and adopt these traits because there's nothing better for your own confidence, your own peace of mind, your own happiness, your own security than knowing how to win at whatever you're trying to win at. So whatever industry you're in, whatever work 
you're in or whatever your goal is, if you can adopt these traits to put yourself that much closer to achieving that result that you desire, then I know I'm doing good. And if anything, I hope that you share this and you do good, you know, pay it forward, right? Do good to, to, for someone else and someone who's just like you, just like-minded, just like you with the same goals and same aspirations and desires and share the link to this video with them, whether you found this on LinkedIn, whether you found it on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, even a Twitter feed or a Snapchat clip, you know, definitely share it with them and let's all climb together. So I'm going to share what those three traits are. And trait number one is probably one that you've heard very common and it's, it's even exploding more so now because of the way communication has advanced. And what I've noticed is that a lot of the successful people had mentors. As I had mentioned at the very beginning of this video, um, you know, the best way to achieve a specific result is find someone who's already achieved the result and learn from them, right? You know, when I was a kid, I used to uh, play video games a lot. Like, and, and one of the main things that I, I, I used to really be fascinated about was the hacks, like the cheat codes, basically, right? Like the up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, select, start. See, some of you guys aren't even old enough to remember that. But, but those are like the certain cheat codes or little hacks that you're able to do to give yourself the upper hand. And so I think of the same thing as kind of like it being a mentor. Someone mentored you to get uh, to a specific result very, very fast. And why I, I've noticed this happen to, to, for most successful people is because when they surrounded themselves with a mentor or they, they put themselves in, in, a, in a position where they had a coach, the coach and the mentor not only held themselves accountable, but also helped them avoid the rejection and the defeats and the loss that they experienced, uh, that they would have experienced if they didn't have a mentor or coach, right? Because it, imagine if you go through this resistance, you keep hitting this wall and no one's telling you how to get through this wall, eventually you're just going to stop because it's human nature to to retract or to get away from things that, that hurt you. We naturally are wired in a way since we were cavemen to protect ourselves. And so this is a way to protect ourselves is that we just, we avoid resistance. And that's where that cliche saying comes or like, Hey man, stay out of your comfort zone. You know, so having a mentor is very, very important. And why it's becoming so more, it's becoming more and more popular is because the advancement of technology and the communication methods that we have today that we just simply didn't have before. You see, our position right now, being being here today, we have so much of an advantage that our elders and those who came up before us did not have. And to overlook it would be a downright lost, like it would be downright disrespectful to to not only our dreams and our goals, but, but to those who had to do the work the hard way, who didn't have YouTube, who didn't have, you know, snap, you know, like a uh, video chat, who didn't have these tools that we have at our fingertips, but we choose to use them for just basic day-to-day -day functions, right? Like I'm gonna go chat with my friend and see what he's doing this weekend. Besides that, utilize that, that, that tool and find a way to get in front of a mentor. You know how many people, uh, hit me up direct like on my direct message ask me a question and if you have like like respond below like leave me a comment for for me giving you the time of day leave a comment below and let me know it's like yeah man I hit you up with this DM and I asked you this question you gave me this very informative piece of information it's because there's this saying right that if you help enough people um, get what they want you will get whatever it is you want and that leads to my second trait uh, that I've that I've noticed in studying these successful uh, individuals and the way they think, their habits and and kind of their backstory and their 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 climb, right? I've studied and I've observed these different characteristics from them because my my goal is to mimic them and to adopt those habits and to repeat them. And so the second trait that I found was that they 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 all are more about serving, meaning they're they're not coming from a a selfish point of view. They're more focused about bringing value as opposed to how they look or opposed to what others think of them. They are more concerned about how to be more, how to be, how to position themselves more valuably, <laughs> I hope that's a word, than their competitors are, right? To bring you more content, to bring you more joy, happiness, ease. And ultimately what it does is it helps you save time if you were to go that route. And, and this, is, this brings me back to sales, of course, because I'm a sales junkie and I love sales. But when you think about it, 
If you've ever had a tough time selling, if you've ever gone through a bad streak and you notice that it's kind of like a snowball, it just grows and grows, is it, and it gets harder, is because it's it's getting harder because you're more about you, because your your thoughts subconsciously is more about is more about um, kind of hoarding, and so in other words, you're you're hoarding the attention, and so you're desperate, meaning you're you you're fearful of loss. And when you're fearful of loss, you're just focused about you and you're not as focused about the people or on the people that you're engaging with. And here's, here's the thing though, is if you have empathy and you think about any time you've ever spoke with someone who's more about them, like think about someone in your circle, it could be you know your, your partner, it could be anyone that you know, maybe someone who's on your work team, who always has a negative comment to say, right? Like after so long, you just kind of mute them out because you just know they're just gonna be complaining. And, 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 and the same effect happens with everyone else when you engage with someone who's just talking about what they want. And, and the reason why is because no one cares about what you want, <laughs> right? It, it's a greedy portion of us and it's, and it's somewhat everyone's kind of guilty about, about being selfish. But really, the only way to really capture attention and to get compliance is when you're speaking to their wants. Does that make sense? And so when you think about like, oh, you, we gotta serve, we gotta serve, we gotta serve, and if that literally bothers you, like you gotta think like, oh man, but I'm giving away my time for free. Oh man, but I'm, what if I do all this work and I get nothing in return? Well, that's the case in point, is you're just worried about you. But if you came off with the, with the mindset and the tonality of it being about you helping them, like if you, like think back above, of when you had a tough time and a friend of yours or a colleague or a coworker of yours said, oh yeah, let me show you how to do this. This is super easy. And they showed you a faster and easier way to, to do it, right? Like it could have been a, a work a challenge. It could have been just a daily challenge. It could have been opening up a bottle of Snapple, right? Whatever it was and they showed you this trick, like, like the ketchup bottle, right? You ever get the ketchup bottle and you can't get any of that ketchup out, but then someone showed you a hack to get it out and you're like, oh man, that was life changing. <laughs> like you, you remember, it's little things like that. But r just think about the engagement. They had you. They had your attention. You were focused, and you studied what they told you to do. Not only that, but you did it because it helped you get what you wanted. They served you with your challenge. They served you a solution to your challenge, and that's why you were so compliant. That's why you gave full attention. And what I've learned in sales is that if you don't have attention, you don't have a sale. And in order to get attention, you need to know what they want. So, so that's what I noticed as a second trade is that they're not, these successful people are not about themselves. They're more about giving. They're actually more about serving the community. They're more about serving other people. So adopt that trait and really analyze, become very self-aware and be truthful with yourself and be like, man, are my thought patterns, the way I communicate right now, my inner dialogue, is it more about me or is it more about other people? Because when you make that shift to let it be about other people and actually helping other people, you will naturally pull and, and, and be, become a magnet of what it is you want. I promise you, try that. And then finally, the third, the third uh, trait that I've noticed upon all of these successful, successful individuals is they understood the art of selling. Crazy, right? So it, you probably are already in line of, of trying to understand the art of selling. You try, you, selling is, it's a little bit vague. Let me go a little bit deeper in on that. What I mean by selling is they understood the art of marketing, attracting attention, right? And then selling to the attention. And so like, as I mentioned earlier before, when we think of Apple, Apple just had this recent keynote to roll out three new iPhones, a brand new Apple iWatch. And if you have a chance to check that out, you probably have, or you probably, you know, you maybe you're a diehard Android fan. Hey, I respect that. But at the end of the day, when you, again, if you want to get to a size or, or a level that, that, that is already being achieved by something, some brand, someone, and you you kind of study from afar and you observe the 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 effect that they have towards their audience. I want you to pay attention to the way that keynote worked. The marketing of of it is insane because it, they have a stadium packed full of people, and this is just to announce the 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 release. Not only that, but when when it gets released, there's another line of people just eager to get what it is that they're giving. They've got premium costs, but pay attention to what Apple has mastered. They've mastered the art of marketing. They mastered the art of marketing by becoming the 
the easy component, the easy technology. So that's going to attract more consumers because they don't want to figure out all this technology stuff. If you think about the words that you use every day when you're trying to sell, and if you're using acronyms and industry jargon that is hard to understand from consumers, you're actually pushing them away. But when you make it easier for them, then you capture their attention. And when you make it more about them, you get their attention even more. That's marketing, that's attracting, right? But then marketing is also different from selling. You see, selling is all about, is, all, is, is really all about how you could solve their, how you could solve their individual problem. And so the keynote is selling by explaining their highlights and how it's solving the challenges that were there before in the previous models. And so this is why people are clapping because they're like, yes, it's a, it's directly tied to the consumer. It's about the consumer, but it takes the empathy and, and, and the kind of the attitude where Apple admits they're wrong. They admit their flaws. And so they become empathetic and they actually attract and create an even more stronger bond. And this is why when they close, and this is the closing part because marketing, selling, and closing are three different things. And, and when they go in for the close, this is when they announce the price man like their their cost is is stupid right like a eleven hundred dollar phone and that's just a bare minimum model eleven hundred for a phone in your pocket do you okay think about that right so not only that but when they announce that for the lowest model people are clapping they're cheering they can't wait to stand in line to pay that premium i want you to think about that because right now you may be selling things and you just can't get over the fact that your price is a little bit higher that you uh that your fees are a little bit higher that your cost is a little bit higher that your rate is a little bit higher you see when you're focused on that you're just focused on yourself but when you turn it around you make it more about the person who's engaging with you in that communication then that it my friend is how you discover and understand the art of selling so those are three powerful tips that I've noticed that most successful people have literally mastered and I hope that you remaster them here at Sales Remastered. If you want to learn more about the third trade, about the art of selling, go to salesremastered.com, check out the banker's formula to six figures and, and invest in yourself, study your craft. If you want to know how to market, sell and close, then I promise you it will, it will cover all of that and then some. Banker's Secret Formula to Six Figures is going to be your tool to get to the top. Whether you're new, you're seasoned, you're intermediate, whatever level you're at right now, if you want to win, you want to win faster. If you, want, if you want to finally invest into something that pays for itself and then pays you back in tenfold, it literally keeps giving you more income, that is where you should be putting your money. You shouldn't be putting your money in, in things that don't give you no return right like like uh that 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 rolex watch right now if you're not at a position to afford yourself a rolex watch or if you're not in a position to afford yourself that luxury car you got to give yourself some patience boo boo take some time get in a position where you can earn that right right so so check it out again salesremaster.com i'll leave a couple links in, uh, below the video but more importantly i'll leave links below uh wh where i'm also at on other social media channels and do me a favor follow me there and if you're already on that platform Follow, subscribe, like, and comment. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.